Etown being hounded there by a couple of Bulldogs, so he gets it to Gobzinski. Back to Swingler. Inside to go to Gobby. All the way, left hand layup. Good. Boy, nobody was defending in the lane. Nice job by him to pick that up. So Gobby goes down and ties it up 2-2. I got to look through these uh, paraphernalia in front of me, the shoes, fans, uh, student bodies holding up. Inside to Ludwig, fadeaway shot knocked away. Tipped up and in by Robert Schlonser. Robert Schlonser with a heck of a tip in for St. Anthony. Just took a swat at it and went up and in the hole. That's a bulldog. They have a red bulldog and they have a big T on its forehead, Larry. That's what this paraphernalia is here. What did it say on it's it? It's a big red bulldog and they've got a T on it. T for T down. Yeah. Huh? On the forehead, a... they got a big gold and blue T on the forehead. There's a foul on Adam Storm. He picked up the personal as uh, the shoes tried to move it down court. It's 4-2 Bulldogs. I've even got to get used to the score being different on the scoreboard it here. This is kind of unique. Kind of whack you out here. On the side, it goes to Swingler. He gets it to Johnny King. And King. they're not going to sit down there. you got to get used to that. Well, I may have to end up standing here. <laughs> Jobzinski on the side to Custer. I'm kind of trying to look them through and around fans here, the student body from T-Town, but they stand all the time, so it's nothing new for them. Johnny King has it. Looks inside to Gobby, can't find him. Over to Swingler, back on the side to King. Inside to Gobzinski, makes another layup. Shot no good. Tipped away loose, picked out there by Swingler. To Custer for three is good. Mitch Custer hits a three-pointer. And it's 5-4 now in favor of T-Town. St. Anthony brings it down quickly. Storm gets it in the corner. To Flock, he turns, shoots, and it's no good. And the rebound goes to Swingler. Swingler clears it out for T-Town. Quickly gets it down to Custer. On the side, the layup. Gobzinski, good. Nice speed to Gobzinski, and he's got four. And T-Town's got a 7-4 to four lead. Here's Slauncer. Saves it inside, but stolen away by T-Town. Off to Custer. Custer to Johnny King. His layup, good. Count it, he got fouled. And Storm on the foul, Larry, and that's his second foul already. Adam Storm tried to knock the shot away and got called for his second foul. St. Anthony wants a timeout, and they get it. It's timeout on the court. We'll be back in uh, 30 seconds. It's 9-4, to T-Town. If you've been thinking of purchasing a new wood stove or furnace, shop Kincaid's in Fairfield. Kincaid's now carry Victoria, a new line of efficient and attractive wood stoves and furnaces. You'll also find a very good supply of generators. And don't forget that salt to mount the winter ice, or maybe you need salt for your water softener. Whatever you need, shop Kincaid's, 1500 West Main in Fairfield, a unique store worth the drive to Fairfield. And with a blistering fast break, got the layup. King's got two, he goes for number three. He puts it up and in. Three points for Johnny King and a 10-4 T-Town lead. That six-point lead, their biggest of the evening. Quickly, Schlonser comes down, spins, baseline jumper out, no good. Flock tips it out of there to Storm, and the Bulldogs keep it alive. Storm gets it to Flock, looks inside to Ludwig, can't find him. Bounce pass goes to Craig Beerman. Over to Storm, out in front to Flock. Underneath, they try to go to Ludwig in a hurry, but the pass came too hot. And the Bulldogs turn it over for the second time in the quarter. Boy, it never fails. It never fails. One, one of these teams gets way ahead of the other one early on. Now, 10 is not bad, but every time it seems these teams play, one or the other has an early spurt. It's happened twice this year, hasn't it? Yep. Gobby in the corner fires it across, and we got a foul call. That may be on Beerman. Yeah, Schmitter's looking underneath here. Let's see what Kevin calls. Yep. Yep, it's Beerman on the foul. St. Anthony has three already. Now I'm out on the edge of the booth. Squatters right there. I just keep huh? going. Just keep moving. You'll be down there in the crowd. They'll be giving you something golden. Mitch hold. Custer falls down, but the ball goes right into the hands of Nick Swingler. He gets it over to Johnny King. King back out in front to Swingler. Over to Custer. 4.59 to go in the first quarter. Johnny King has it. Looking. Doesn't go across court. Instead, out in front to Swingler. Back to King. Open for a three. King shoots. It's no good. Rebound taken by Ludwig. He clears it out to Storm. Adam Storm fires it underneath to Schlonser. Goes up for the layup, and he scores. Robert Schlonser on a nice feed from Storm, and it's 10-6. 4.34 to go. Pressure by St. Anthony. Gobby has it. Gets it across finally. 
And they back and forth over the timeline. Before got a turnover on T-Town. Before Gopzinski could get the pass away. Yeah. He went over and back. That's T-Town's first turnover. Jobby was on one side. He stepped across, and he kind of came back across the line looking to get rid of the ball, and T-Town gets called for the turnover. Darren Pierday is in the ball game now for St. Anthony. Pierday takes it down court, gets it on the side to Craig Beerman. Underneath the Slauncer goes for the layup, but got fouled before he could get there. So, it's a foul on T-10. Swingler Tipton. Tipton, his first, two on the shoes. Or first, that's the first on the shoes. Tipton into the ball game for T-Town, and then we mentioned the fact that Darren Pierday was in for St. Anthony. So he sat he, down when Tipton came in. All righty. And Storm sat down for St. Anthony. And Flock has it get away from him. Now he regains control. He loses it again. It's loose on the floor. And a jump is called. An alternate possession favors T-Town. Adam Flock was trying to dribble it out in front, and he got lost control of the ball, and then the scramble was on. And that's three turnovers on uh, the Bulldogs. 4.08 to go here in the first quarter of play. It's 10-8, or I'm sorry, 10-6 in favor of T-Town. Swingler gets it across. Here's a steal. Ludwig gets it. He intercepted the pass. Ludwig takes it to the hole, and a blocking foul on Swingler. Got in the path of Ludwig. He wasn't going to let him make the layup, but he picked up the personal. Not a good trip for Nick. It was kind of a lazy pass on offense, and right. then he gets called for the foul coming the other way. It's a shoe second foul. Behrman sets down as Adam Storm returns to the lineup for St. Anthony. Ludwig will inbound under the basket. He gets it into Flock on the side. Back to Ludwig, who uh, couldn't hold on to it because he was kind of pushed away from the ball by Johnny King. And Johnny King ended up hitting the floor, and St. Anthony missed connections on the pass, and they turn it over for the fourth time here in the quarter. Four turnovers in half a quarter is unlike St. Anthony. Custer gets it to Swingler. He finally gets it across midcourt. Swingler, a bounce pass to Gobzinski, who comes way out in front to help out. Over to Custer, to King. 3.44 left here in our first quarter. It's 10-6 in favor of Totopolis. They're up by four, and they've got the ball. They get it over to Custer. Custer in the middle of Gobzinski puts his head down and travels. He got his feet tangled up. Gobby did, and he knew he made a mistake. And his feet got tangled up, and that's the third turnover on Totopolis. So both of these squads kind of coughing it up here. Both are shooting pretty well. They're just not getting as many opportunities as they should. Storm hustles it down court for St. Anthony, gets it off to Fear Day. Fear Day back out to Adam Storm. Works against Swingler, takes the baseline, dumps it underneath the flock. Flock has his cousin Gobby on him, goes inside to Ludwig. He can't find the handle, stolen by Mitch Custer. Custer drives for the hole, puts it up and in. Nice driving layup by Mitch Custer. So they turn the steal into a two-pointer, and it's 12-6, T-Town. Storm gets it off on the side to Fear Day. Fear Day drives all the way, dumps it off to Storm. His jumper is up and out, no good. Rebound goes to Ludwig, puts it up and in. Jason Ludwig on the rebound, makes it 12-8. 2.46 to go in the quarter. Custer gets it to King, to Gobzinski, to Swingler, stolen away by Schlonser. Schlonser on the steal, finally gets it out of there to Flock, and Flock clears it out to Storm, and the Bulldogs turn it, get it right back away from T-Town. Underneath, they go to Fear Day, and he has the ball goes through his hands out of bounds. Boy, St. Anthony is really tense, Larry. Their passing is not what it ever is. Here comes... Uh, Craig Behrman in, and Jonathan Wendy comes in, and Schlonser and Flock sit down. St. Anthony just needs to turn the yeah. timer back about a half a crank. That's about right. All right, 2.23 to go here in our first quarter. Tipton's got it for T-Town. He's really hurt. Uh, there's a steal by Storm. Storm drives, gets it over to Behrman, layup good. Behrman on the layup that time. That's his first basket. That's five shoes turnovers. T-Town's Mitch Custer loses it, but there's Johnny King to pick it up. King drives, penetrates, scoops it off to Taylor, out in front to Gobby. His jumper good! Nice move, Todd Taylor. Uh, yeah, Taylor got it to the open man. Storm shoots for and misses for St. Anthony, and Ludwig got it over the back. Gobby had position inside, and Jason went up over the top. Ludwig's first and four on St. Anthony. A minute 49 to go on our opening quarter. 14 to 10, our score. T-Town on top. 
Ludwig sets down. Schlonser returns to the lineup. Flock comes in for Fierde. And Darren Fierde takes a seat. And now, against pressure, the shoes bring it down. They get it off to Custer. Hounded by Behrman, gets it to Tipton on the side of the court. He nearly lost it, got it to Custer. They get it to the Johnny King, and we got an injured St. Anthony player. Jason Ludwig, as usual. He's No, it's Behrman. It's Behrman. Behrman. Sorry. Usually it's Ludwig's always in there scrapping, and Craig's really they're talking, woozy. They're talking about uh, somebody threw an elbow into him and really cold cocked him. And Jason Ludwig's being, or uh, Craig Behrman's being helped to the end of the floor where the trainer's going to, uh, he's got a bloody nose is what he's got. I don't know who gave it to him. Somebody threw a forearm and got him, uh, gave him a bloody nose. Meanwhile, they mop up some uh, blood that spilled on the court over there. That was away from play, so I don't know. Uh, it was away, the, the situation was away from play. I don't know what big, what happened over there. I had no way of knowing unless it's on video or something, but yeah, Behrman yeah. went down in the heap, and they're treating him on the stage down there for a bloody nose. The Benuti trainers, by the way, are here and have been here every game. Matt Hensley, the St. Anthony athletic director, following the bloody trail out <laughs> around the big A on that end of the St. Anthony floor. There's some fans sitting over there real close to the ash. Action could tell you what happened, but uh, I didn't see it. So we don't know, except Craig Behrman got a bloody nose out of it. And there wasn't any foul. No. So apparently none of the three officials saw it. So he's being treated down there on the end of the floor, and now T-Town resumes action. Johnny, or uh, Mitch Custer has it. He gets it over to Tipton. Tipton gets it to Gobzinski. Gobzinski loses it, stolen away by Wendy, and now he goes down on a trip, and Gobzinski tripped him. Well, I think the intensity on this ball game is going to be pretty thick from here on out. It's already kind of physical and getting more. Gobzinski's first foul, shoes have three. Each team's turned it over six times already. There was another steal by St. Anthony, and as Jonathan Winnie headed down court, he got his feet tangled up with Gobby, and Gobzinski got a foul. Ludwig looks to get it in, looking, looking, gets it inside to Winnie, stolen away by Tipton. Tipton drives for the basket, he puts it up, and no good! It climbs out of there, and Flack gets the rebound. He gets it to Storm. Storm brings it down for St. Anthony. Gets it out in front to Flock. He tries a three. It's no good. Rebound Schlonser, and Schlonser goes up and makes it, but he got fouled before the shot. Boy, Daly was backing him up like he was a yeah. trailer on the semi. <laughs> Todd Daly on his first foul, and that's four on T-Town. So with a minute five to go in the first quarter, it's 14 to 10 favor of T-Town, St. Anthony's ball, Ludwig gets a deep to Flock. Flock goes way over to Ludwig with it, makes a nice save, goes baseline, powers it up and in! Jason Ludwig's got six, and it's 14 to 12. St. Anthony's cut that six-point deficit to two. Gobby gets it to Custer. Custer flips it off to Taylor. He goes up for the shot. It got rejected big time by Adam Flock and a foul's call. Foul on Flock, but certainly he broke up the layup, didn't he? Yeah. Flock's first, five on St. Anthony. By the way, uh, Craig Behrman is sitting up on the stage. He's got a cold towel on his nose as the trainers work on him down there, cleaning him up a little bit. Meanwhile, Taylor goes to the free throw line. It's up and it's no good. In comes Joe Busher. He's going to come in for Todd or for uh, Jonathan Winty. Beerman now takes the ice off his nose. They're kind of checking him out there. He'll probably be back in the ball game here in a little bit. He's pretty tough. Free throw by Taylor. Good. Todd Taylor's first point of the night makes it 15 to 12. So the Bulldogs bring it down, trailing by three here with uh, 41 seconds to go in our first quarter of play. Block goes inside to Schlauncer, but it's knocked away underneath the Ludwig for the layup. Nice pass from Flock. Good reaction by Flock to come back and get that. Nice job looking underneath for, for Ludwig. 15 to 14. It's a one-point T-Town lead. It had been six. Tipton in trouble. Nearly knocked away by Schlauncer. And now we got a foul on Taylor. They Taylor got called for a shove under the basket. On Schlauncer. Yeah. 
Daly called for his second. That's only five, so they'll take it out of bounds. This is certainly, so far, the most physical of the three meetings between the two teams this year. And the most close <laughs> this early in the ballgame. Yeah, St. Anthony's ball with 20 and a half seconds to go. Slauncer sits down. Fear Day returns. Wendy comes back. We got Boucher. We got Storm and Fear Day. Whoops, we got too many players. Now, now we got down. to sit down. Sure doesn't look like anybody wants to quit playing after tonight. Nope. They get it into Storm. 15-14. T-Town by a point. St. Anthony brings it down with 10 seconds to go here in the quarter. Storm has it. Looking. Starts to make a move. Storm drives, spins, stops, looks, needs some help, gets it off to Winnie. Winnie hooks it underneath the Ludwig and it's knocked out of bounds by Johnny King. Well, St. Anthony a bit disorganized. I'm not sure they knew what they wanted to run that possession. Or Tatopoulos played just the right defense. That could be. Here comes Flock in. Now, you know what they're planning here on an inbounds pass. As Flock comes in, they'll probably alley-oop to him and see what happens. His first cousin, Andrew Gobzinski, is looking him right in the nose. But they got Schlonser underneath, too. So a double high post. Let's see what they do with it. Ludwig looking. He gets to Flock. Flock dribbles it, loses it, and he got fouled by Nick Swangler. Still Swangler a, got him on the arm. Still a common foul, so we'll have to inbound it again, Larry. 1.6 seconds to go. Swangler's second. That's just six on T-Town, so St. Anthony still has to inbound here. Ludwig looking to alley-oop. Instead, sw a Storm out of the corner. His three no good at the buzzer, and that's the end of the first quarter. We'll be back in a minute. It's to topless 15. St. Anthony, 14. Possession. Ludwig will inbound. Ludwig looking, gets it into Storm. We got Schlonser, Flock, Boucher, Ludwig, and Storm out there for St. Anthony. Bulldogs trail by a point and have the basketball. They've never led in this one. Schlonser's got it. In the corner, has it knocked away, but regains control. Gets it out to Storm. Storm gets it to Boucher. Back to Storm. Needs inside, gets it into Schlonser, but is tipped away by Tipton. Doing a pretty good job of denying the ball to Schlonser. He's only had three shots tonight. Ludwig's been pretty effective inside, though. He's four out of five. Haney in for Gobzinski. That's Ted Haney in the shoes lineup. Block and Storm still haven't scored. There's a pass inside, gets kicked by King or Haney. Anyway, it belongs to St. Anthony on the end of the court. 7.34 to go here in the first half. One point lead for T-Town. They did lead by six. Greg Behrman injured and it's down getting some treatment, but I think they've taken him to the dressing room now. Check on that bloody nose he had. Here's Flock, he fakes a three, he goes to Ludwig, shoots a jumper, no good. Rebound taken out of there by King. Johnny King races to the other end, gets it to Custer, his jumper up, no good. Rebound Schlauncer, clears it out to Storm. Storm heads down court, still going, shovels it to Boucher. Boucher spins, shoots, no good. Rebound goes to King again. Johnny King gets shoved by Flock. And Johnny King's okay, I think, as he gets up. Common foul there. All righty, it'll be shoes ball on the side of the court. Into the lineup comes Gobzinski, and they're going to give Haney a breather. So Ted comes in and gives Gobby a blow, and that's his job, I'm telling you. Coach Crawford knows the strings to pull and gets guys out there, and they don't lose anything when they do that. Why are we going to the line? It's only six. Yeah. There, Kevin Schnitker says, wait a minute, boys, we're in too big a hurry. Yeah. Not, not one and one yet. Nope. T-Town's ball, side of the court. They were all lined up to shoot, though. Yeah. It'll be Gobby doing the honors. It's 16 fouls on either one, by the way, so either team's going to put the other one in the bonus next foul. Nick Swingler brings it down for T-Town, gets it off to... Mitch Custer to Gobzinski, back to Custer across midcourt. To Gobzinski, to Swingler, to Johnny King, down the middle to Gobby, shoots from 12, out, no good. Rebound Ludwig, nearly fell down but saved it. Gets it to Storm, ahead to Boucher, back out to Adam Storm. Storm with the basketball, backs up, sets up the offense. T-Town playing pressure, man to man, in the corner they go to Flock. He goes baseline against Gobby, shoots and got it. Adam Flock puts it a 16-15 deep. St. Anthony lead, and that's their first lead of the night. Bulldog fans on their feet. They like that coming down from six to take the one-point lead. 6-15 to go in the first half. Johnny King has trouble with the dribble. Gets it out to Swingler. Swingler to Gobzinski. On the side to King. Shoots a three. Good. The old answering shot, eh, there? Johnny King. 
Gets a three-pointer underneath. They go to Schlonser. He can't handle it. Gets it out to Boucher to Storm. Storm back to Boucher. Sets it up out in front to Flock, and we got a hold on Tipton. He was grabbing a hold yeah. of Schlonser. Boy, they're really after Robert. I think Kenny knows what everybody knows, that Schlonser's been playing really effectively inside lately, and they're You're paying right. a lot of attention to him. Tipton second, and that is seven. So St. Anthony's in the bonus. Third day in, Joe Boucher sets down. First quarter stats saw T-Town hit six of nine for 67%, two for three from the line for 67%, six turnovers, just two rebounds for T-Town in that first quarter, and they were one for two on three-point shots. St. Anthony, seven out of 14 for 50%. They didn't go to the line. They had seven turnovers. They had six rebounds. St. Anthony missed both their three-point shots. Schlonser hits the first, misses the second. Custer gets the rebound. It's 18 to 17. T-Town with a one-point lead. Pass goes to Johnny King on the side. Back out to Swingler. Inside to Gobzinski. Turns from 10 and got it. Gobby hit the jumper. He can hit those all night. He's got eight. You get him eight or 10 feet out. Nobody in his face. That's just about home free. 20 to 17. That's the lead for T-Town. Fear Day gets it off the flock. Flock goes around Gobzinski, loses it, loose ball, scramble, T-Town's got it. Gobzinski beats Custer for the layup. No good, but he's foul. I guess Fear Day. I think Darren tried to break up the layup. Let's see what Terry Andrews says. Yep. Fear Day's first. Now both teams are in the bonus, Larry. Yep. Well, the Bulldogs had the possession down here and ended up with a careless pass, and you just don't do that against T-Town. They'll take it away from you every time. Too much dribbling. That's <laughs> it. You got it. Too much dribbling. You put that ball down like that, give somebody a chance to grab it. Mitch Custer to the free throw line. It's up, it's short. Boy, that doesn't happen very often. Mitch is an 85% free throw shooter on the year. Craig Beerman standing on the end of the court down there has his uh, warm-ups on and a a device on his nose to protect the bloody nose he got. Custer hits this free throw. He's got six. And uh, I'm not sure whether Craig's going to come back or not. He wants to come out and see what's going on on the floor. I doubt if he sees much more action. He might have a broken nose. Could be. That's too bad. We saw Corey Parks get one for Effingham earlier this year. It's too bad because Craig's been playing so much better lately. Fear Day underneath for the layup. Won't drop. Rebound. Ludwig puts it up. Rejected. Taken by Fear Day. Then stolen by King. Johnny King lobs it to Custer. Custer has it stripped and stolen away, but he gets it back. Out to Nick Swingler on the side to King. It's 21-17, a four-point lead, and there's a foul on Fear Day as Johnny King hit the deck. Fear Day gets called for using the, the leg on him. Fear Day's picked up a couple here in a hurry. That's eight now on St. Anthony. To the line goes Johnny King. Johnny's a 79% uh, free throw shooter on the year. Here's the toss. It's up, and it is good. Johnny King's got seven, makes it 22-17. So it's a five-point edge for T-Town with 4.52 to go in the first half. Next one up and good. King hits it, he's got eight. 23-17, there's that six-point lead again, the largest of the game. They've had it twice now. Matches 10 to four early on. Right. Storm has it for the Bulldogs. Oh, but look at the muscle inside between Schlonser and Tipton. That time Schlonser. And they call Schlonser for the foul. I think that, and it certainly it could go either way. I think Ed Gardner's just wanting to keep a handle on it. He called one on Tipton earlier. Now there's one on Schlonser, and I think he just doesn't want anybody to get hurt. Coach K is really upset. He said Tipton is the one who started it, and actually he did, but Robert finished it and got caught. That's exactly what happened. Tipton goes to the free throw line. Coach K is really upset. He's trying to get Ed Gardner's eye. Meanwhile, here's Tipton at the free throw line. Puts it up. No good. Rebound Schlonser. That's a third. Now that made Coach K happy, right? Because Tipton missed and Schlonser got the rebound. I'm not real sure. <laughs> Underneath, they try to go to Ludwig in the shoes. Knock it away again. Here comes Mitch Custer with it for T-Town. Needs some help. Needs some help. Gets it out to King. Over to Swingler. 23-17. T-Town, Gobby on a jumper, no good. Goes out of bounds, saved from going out by Tipton, but into the hands of Flock. And now it's stolen by Tipton, and he scores. Tipton stole Flock's pass and put it up and in. 
25 to 17. Now T-Town's up by eight. That's their biggest lead of the ball game. Here's Flock, a runner no good down the paint. Gets his own rebound, puts it up in, and he got fouled before the shot. That's a right call. Yeah. He that was, was fouled while he was grabbing the rebound. I think it's on Nick Swingler, Larry. That's three on him already. And he's Here comes Taylor in to replace him. Yeah, pretty valuable defensive player for Tatopoulos, and of course, uh, certainly helps run the offense. So Adam Flock goes to the free throw line with 3.57 to go here in the first half. D-Town's widened the margin to 25 to 17 after it was... St. Anthony actually had worked themselves into a lead at 16 to 15. But now T-Town's turned it around. It's a 9 to 1 run. Yeah. 10 to 1 run. 10 to 1. For T-Town, 3.57 to go here in the half. Flock to the line. Adam Flock has two points on the night. His free throw is no good. Rebound Gobzinski, and he got fouled by Fairday. Who's picked up his third. He's picking him up in bushel baskets. So we walk to the other end of the court. That's 10, by the way, Larry. Super bonus. You don't usually see that in the first half. This last four minutes here of the half of going to be a free throw affair, I think. Had a free-for-all earlier. Yeah. Gobzinski with eight. Puts it up. No good. Here comes Jonathan Wendy in for fear day. So each team has a player with three now. Swingler for T-Town. And fear day for St. Anthony. Gobby with eight. Puts it up and in. Nine points for Gobby and a 26-17, nine-point lead for T-Town, their largest of the evening. St. Anthony's here, Slauncer going under against Tipton, he scores. Robert Slauncer's got seven, they got it inside on a nice pass from Flock, and he scores. Only five points for the Bulldogs in this quarter. Tipton has it on the side, fires it across to King. Johnny King brings it out in front, looking. Gets it on the side to Taylor, to King, to Tipton, to Custer. Baseline to Gobzinski, stolen by Ludwig, but he was out of bounds with it. Ludwig took it away from Gobzinski, but he was right on the line and got his toe down. And it is a, still belongs to Totopoulos. We won't give him a turnover. I don't think he had possession long enough to Correct. give him a turnover. Gobzinski gets it out front to Tipton. Had an ocean to pull the trigger on a three. Now gets it over to King. 3.15 and counting here in the first half. D-Town up 26-19. Custer had an ocean on the three, but doesn't. Yeah, that was smart. He was way out. Cross court to Custer. Now he's open for the three. It's on the way. No good. Rebound goes to Ludwig. Jason Ludwig, who's averaging 5.9 rebounds a game, pulls that one down. And he just got his 5.9. He has six right? already. In wow. Now. Bulldog fans on their feet. They want to see some scoring by St. Anthony. Ludwig takes it out of trouble, and Johnny King hooked him with the knee and gets a foul. First foul of the night on John. That's nine on T-Town. So the one and bonus coming for Mr. Ludwig, and here's Fear Day back in for Flock with 2.47 to go in our first half. Effingham and Charleston playing across town. That'll get underway shortly. It was uh, senior night over there. You're listening to KJ Country 102.3, the topless Effingham. Right at the 8 o'clock mark here. Some uh, confusion as to who the foul was on. I was some confusion about whether it's one or one or two shots. Oh, okay. It's, it's one a one and one. one for Ludwig. Jason has eight points on the night. His toss is no good. Rebound goes to Gobzinski. He clears it out to Custer. Mitch Custer works against Wendy, brings it down. Needs some help, gets it over to Tipton. Inside to Gobzinski. Back out to King. Custer open for a three. Good. Mitch Custer hits a three-pointer. He's got nine, and there's a 10-point lead, 29 to 19. Here's Fear Day on a jumper short. Rebound taken out of there by Custer. And now St. Anthony can't buy a basket. Tipton had an ocean on the three. Back to Custer, back to Tipton. 
Nothing there. Back out to Mitch Custer. I think it's his second quarter thing. You know, they only got the one basket in the second quarter last night. Custer open for another three. No good this time. Rebound goes to King. He shovels it out front. It's loose. Custer gets it. Shot no good. This one saved by Slauncer, but into Tipton, and he misses it. Rebound Gobzinski. Reverse layup. No good. Tipped out of there and taken by Taylor. He gets it to Johnny King. Now, man, that's four rebounds. This and now Storm gets a steal and a foul on King, trying to get it back. Good job by Adam Storm. He picked Johnny King's pocket, and then King fouled him. That's 10 now, so both teams shoot two here for this last minute 48. A minute, <coughs> excuse me, a minute and 48 seconds remaining. Here comes Flock back in for St. Anthony. First turnover for T-Town in the quarter. Oh, they've played excellent this quarter. They've got uh, 14 points in this quarter to St. Anthony's five. Storm hits the free throw. That's his first point of the game. Here comes Boucher and Flock in. Pierday sits down. And who else sat down? No, Schlonser. Schlonser sat down. Meanwhile, Storm, Aaron Niebergi in for T-Town. For King. For Johnny King, who just picked up that second foul. Here's Storm's free throw. It's good. Storm hits them both. He's got two. Makes it 29 to 21. T-Town by eight. They did have an 11-point lead, their largest of the half. Mitch Custer's got it. For T-Town, takes it on the side. Gets it out front to Niebergi. To Gobzinski. Back to Custer. Almost lost it. And it does go out of bounds. Touch last by Custer. And he's trying to say that uh, Adam Flock knocked touch at last, but Ed Gardner says no. So Mitch Custer didn't like that call, and he usually doesn't show much emotion either way, you know? This last couple of games, though, I think being a senior and saying it's all over if we don't win tonight, I think that's a pretty good motivator. Flock being hounded by Gobzinski, and there's a hold on Gobzinski. Gobby holding Flock got called for the personal. See now. Gobby's upset, and Ken Crawford gets him around the shoulder and says, hey, here's what happened. Yeah. Here's why they called the foul. That was smart, because yeah. instead of inciting him, he got him calmed down and said, yeah. here's what you did, and I'll bet he doesn't do it the next time. Foul on Gobby is his second. 29-21 in favor of Totopoulos. Block hits the free throw. Adams got three points. Makes it 29-22. So the shoes did have an 11-point edge, but it's been worked down slowly but surely with a minute 20 to go. Flock second one good. He's got four. Here comes Fear Day in for Storm and Schlonser in for Boucher. A minute 20 to go, a six-point game now. <coughs> Well, you back got to get Storm out of there, Larry. You don't want him getting a third foul here with a minute to go before the half. Yeah, and that's why the coach, I think, just took him out. Wise move. Here's Mitch Custer, double team, gets it off to Dipton. Out in front, it goes to Custer. A minute 10 to go in the half. Aaron niebergie has got it. Back out to Custer, to Gobzinski, over to Aaron Niebergie. Had a notion. Has it knocked away, but Gobby gets it back. Flipped over on the side to Tipton, to Custer, baseline jumper. No good. Rebound taken by Flock. He clears it out of trouble and gets it over on the side to Fear Day. We see Anthony gets a bucket here. They're right back in the show. Fear Day brings it down against Aaron Niebergi. Gets it off to Flock. Flock down the paint. Up on a jumper. Charging foul on Flock. He ran into Custer. Well, you can see it coming, too. Yeah. I mean, Mitch was standing right there in the lane. Flock called for his third. Yeah, he knew Anthony. that was coming. And now T-Town's got a chance to close out the quarter. 41 and a half seconds to go. Had Flock hit that, it wouldn't have counted because he got called well, for the charge it anyway. It went in. It went in? But wipe it off, said Terry yeah. Andrews. Yep. Because of the charge. Yeah, it Should went in. Should have pulled up a little quicker and just shot the eight-foot jumper instead of trying to get a little closer. When you run over people, they're going to charge you for it. <laughs> that's, about, <laughs> yeah, that's about how that app works every time. Yeah. 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 All right, now it's a six-point lead for T-Town, and they've got the ball. The Bulldogs had a chance to cut it to four and didn't capitalize. They double-team Custer. They double-team. They steal it. They knock it away. We got a jump call. Possession arrow favors T-Town. Jonathan Winnie. Yeah, he got Join, down dirty. Johnny survival tactics there. Kind of got in there and mixed it up with Mitch Custer. It'll be Gobby's ball on the side, or T-Town's ball, and Gobby will inbound it. St. Anthony may try that again now that the alternate possession would go their way. On the side, it goes to Tipton. Out in front to Aaron Niebergi into Gobzinski. Over to Custer. Back out to Niebergi. Over to Custer. 
Back out front to Nieberge, to Tipton, takes the three, doesn't take it. Way across court, they go to Custer, a high pass, but he gets it. Back in the corner to Nieberge. Back to Custer, 10 seconds, 9 seconds. Tipton looks at the clock. Almost stolen by Wendy. What's Tipton going to do? He gets it over to Aaron Nieberge for three. Good! What a big basket by T-Town's Aaron Nieberge at the buzzer. What a big, big basket. That's the end of the first half, folks. We'll be back in a minute. Here's your halftime score. It's the Wooden Shoes of Totopolis, 32. St. Anthony, 23. And here for one of these two teams, the other one a sectional trip next Wednesday night at Red Hill. St. Anthony's ball on the alternate possession. Schlunzer gets it in to Adam Storm and he takes it down court. Storm on the left side. It's a nine point lead for T Town. Their biggest have been 11. They go inside to Ludwig. He works for the layup and missed it. Rebound Schlunzer puts it up and it's out. No good. And Gobby gets the rebound and that's not a good way for St. Anthony to start the second half. Two quick inside shots. Custer for three in the corner. It's a Wow. The Bulldogs miss. Custer comes down and nails a three. And it's 35-23. There's their biggest lead of the game at 12 points. Underneath, Schlauncer misses. Ball goes out of bounds. Touch last by Tetopoulos. Boy, three shots are pretty much layups, and they wouldn't go. Of course, I That's know right. they're not uncontested. No. Jason Ludwig will inbound for St. Anthony. Slaps the ball. Gets it in the corner to Flock. Flock goes back inside to Ludwig, spins, goes up for the shot, doesn't drop, and a foul call. I think he was getting held on the way up. Three Two shots for Jason. 34, is that right? That's not uh, right. Yeah. It's so quick I didn't see it. It is. <laughs> it's on Andy Gobzinski. That's his third. All right. So Swingler and Gobzinski each have three for T-Town now, and Fearday and Flock with three piece for St. Anthony. Ludwig's free throw is good. Jason Ludwig's got nine. 35-24. T-Town in command right now by 11. Here's the next one up, and it's good. Ludwig's got 10. And now the Bulldogs need to stop, get the ball back, or they're going to be looking at a double-digit deficit here in this third quarter. Already have been down by a dozen. Custer's got it on the side, takes a high pass, gets it out front to King. King gets it back over to Tipton. Tipton to King. On the side to Tipton. Down the paint, makes a move up off the glass. No good. Rebound Ludwig. Gets it to Storm. Storm brings it down the right side. Has it for the Bulldogs. Cuts across the paint, spins, has it stripped away from him and stolen. King ends up with it. King takes it to the hole. Got it. And a foul on Fairday. Johnny King took it to the hole. Got the basket. Got foul. We'll go to the line. Look for three. Fairday's fourth foul. 37-25. Back to that 12-point edge. And King will try to make it 13. That was a great move. In comes Wendy, sitting down now as Fear Day. So Jonathan Wendy checks in for the Bulldogs. Well, when Johnny takes it to the hole, he gets that angle on you. He doesn't just plow down the lane and run over people. He gets that angle on you, and it's tough to head him off. Here's his toss. It's good. King's got 11, and it's a 38-25, 13-point lead. That's the largest of the game. Inside to Schlauncer, has trouble clearing it out, and a hold on T-Town. Tipton was the holder, I think. Let's check. Terry Andrews says, yeah. You're right. Tipton called for his third. So there's three shoes players with three now. T-Town with two team fouls this half. Flock will inbound, looking, looking, gets it into Schlauncer out in front to Ludwig. In the corner to Flock, shoots a three from the deep corner. It's long, no good. Rebound scramble four, will jump it. Holding the possession favors T-Town. So, the long rebound tied up by a player from each team. And the shoes bring it down. 6.20 to go in the third quarter, 38 to 25. Custer gets it over to King. In the corner, they go to Tipton. He goes baseline. Nothing there. Kicks it back out to King. Back they go to Tipton. He goes baseline. Leaves it in, in traffic with Paley. Goes up for the shot. Rejected by Flock. 
But I think Winnie got him before he got the shot off. Correct. Good call there. Winnie called for his first two on St. Anthony in the half. I thought before the shot, but Terry Andrews wow. says he was in the process of shooting, so he's going to go to the line. Coach Kuznarek wants a full timeout, so he's going to get it. I'm out on the court, St. Anthony, back in a minute. I think Taylor was in the act of shooting when he got foul, but our opinion don't count. They're going to let him shoot two, and he missed the first one. If the foul had been on Flock, yes. 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 But the foul wasn't on Flock was when on. he fouled him before the shot. Yes, he did. Taylor's free throw good. So Taylor's got two, and that makes it 39 to 25, and now T-Town puts some pressure on. Flock brings it down, gets it across the timeline. Needs some help, gets it off to Storm. Storm saves it, barely, before it goes over the timeline. Takes it to the right side, gets it to Flock. In the corner, looking underneath for Schlonser. Takes it himself, left-hand layup, rolls in. Nice move by Adam Flock, and he's got six. Nobody came to the baseline, and he had a good move to the hole. 39 to 27. They double-team King. He gets it to Custer. They get it to Tipton. Cross-court pass to King in the shoes. Get it to Custer for a three. Good! Wow. Wow. He's hit four threes tonight. And he's got 15 points, and it's 42-27 T-Town. Boy, he dreamed that puppy. Boy, they're on the verge of breaking this one wide open. There's Taylor on a hold on Schlonser. Foul on Taylor is his third. Mm. T-Town has four kids with three fouls now, so that might bear some watching. Ludwig will inbound for St. Anthony. Looking, gets it in the corner to Winnie. Out in front to Storm. Storm gets it to Ludwig. Ludwig makes a move up on the double pump, and he got it. Jason Ludwig's got 12 as he hits a jumper underneath, and it's 42-29. Had been a 15-point lead for T-Town, their largest of the game. Johnny King being hounded by Winnie gets a steal, but he got a foul instead. Winnie called for his second, and that's three now in St. Anthony this half. 4.55 left in our third quarter of play. Gobzinski gets it into Custer. Custer on the side to Tipton. He's double teamed and loses the ball and taken away by Ludwig. Ahead to Storm for the layup. Storm puts it in. First turnover for T-Town in the quarter. That's four for Storm. Makes it 42 to 31. The Bulldog fans trying to fire their team up a little bit. There's a travel on King, but no, he lost the ball before he traveled, and Robert Schlonser stole it. You knew there was a turnover in there somewhere. I, I could see something under there. Here's Ludwig up underneath. He scores. Ludwig underneath has 14 as he scores. Six in the quarter. And it's 42-33, and Coach Crawford wants a 20-second timeout. And the Bulldog fans are fired up. We'll be back in 30 seconds. It's 42-33, that 15-point de deficit down to nine. Got that All shoe right. hat. He can kind of put that on his head and it's, you know, wear that thing. There you go. All right. T-Town's ball after the timeout. Four minutes to go in the third quarter. King goes inside to Gobzinski. Turn shot no good. Storm on the rebound. Looking down court for Winnie, but doesn't trigger it on the side to Boucher. Boucher looks out in front to Storm. On the baseline to Ludwig. He powers up for a layup that goes in. Holy cow, what a move. That's about as far as Jason can lean. He can't reach any farther than that. It's 42-35. Three straight inside baskets for St. Anthony. That's worth noting. Johnny King nearly loses it. Gets it to Nick Swingler. Swingler on a double team. The Bulldogs put on the pressure. They get it to Gobzinski. He gets it back to Swingler. On the baseline, they go to Tipton. Tipton looking and knocked away, but regained by Gobzinski. He gets it out to Tipton. Tipton, the Bulldogs put on the pressure. On the side, they go to Gobzinski, and Winnie fouled him. Winnie good, de good defense by the Bulldogs at possession. Yeah. Move to the hole, though, when he knew the layup was coming if he didn't foul him, but that's three on Winnie since the half started. And he goes out, and Adam Flock returns to the lineup. So St. Anthony has Flock. And Wendy with three and Fear Day with four. Boy, we could see some departures here before too much longer. It's a seven-point lead for T-Town. It was 15 just a minute ago. So the Bulldogs on a rally. 
And they've tightened up the defensive pressure a little bit as well. Cross-court pass nearly got away, but Custer got it. His shot no good. Loose ball taken by Flock. Throws it out to Storm. Storm hustles down court. Stops, pops the jumper. Out no good. Rebound Gobzinski. Gobby clears it out for T-Town. Gets it off to Swingler. That would have brought this crowd to its feet, wouldn't it? That's no doubt. Bounce pass on the baseline to Tipton. He has trouble with it. The Bulldogs hound him there. Is that a double dribble? I guess not. Tipton shoots. No good. Loose ball. Tipton gets it back. He's everywhere. Out in front to Custer. On the side to King. Johnny King down the paint. Dumps it in the corner. Wide open is Tipton. He dumps it out to King. Off to Custer. He goes baseline. Two-point jumper. No good. Rebound goes to Tipton. He puts it up and in. Where did he, how did he get in there? I don't know, first of all, how he got the rebound, let alone the basket. How about that? What a basket by John Tipton. That's big. 44-35. That takes a little of the pressure off. Inside to Ludwig. Got fouled by Mitch Custer. Now the Bulldogs are looking for Ludwig inside just about every trip because he's doing a pretty good job in there at 6-1, you know? Well, that's right. He's a strong kid, and he's sure not afraid to mix it up. We've seen that all season long, and he's gone. he's got eight points in the quarter. Pusher sets down as Fair Day comes in. The foul on Custers, he's first. T-Town has four in the half. And Schlonser sets down as they bring Winnie back in. Ludwig will inbound. He gets it into Flock. Back to Ludwig. Goes up for the layup, and he scores. Ten points in the quarter for him. 18 in the game. Ludwig makes it 44-37 as St. Anthony continues a little mini run here at T-Town with a minute and a half, a minute and 55 seconds to go in the third quarter. Yabi gets it on the side, tipped away by Storm. Storm steals it. He drives for the layup, and he missed it. There's Gob no whistle, and now we got a foul on Swingler. Gobzinski did a nice job getting back on defense and affecting that shot by Adam Storm. That was a nice effort. Storm looked like he had a clear layup, and Gobby came out of nowhere and knocked it away, and then Nick Swingler picked up a foul on the rebound. And Swingler's fourth. Five on T-Town and a half, and Swingler with four now. <laughs> <laughs> Ludwig is whispering in the flock's ear, and Johnny King's listening in on the conversation. <laughs> Eavesdropper, eh? 44-37. It's a seven-point T-Town lead. Ludwig gets it into flock. Flock looking, looking. Lost the ball. Stolen away by Tipton. Actually, Flock just lost the dribble. Tipton was there to pick it up. Turnover number two on St. Anthony. Gobby down the paint. His shot up and in. Gobby's got 11. Fearday hustles it down, gets it to Flock. Looks inside to Schlonser, an easy layup for Robert, and he missed it. His tip no good. This loose ball claimed by Fearday. Fearday clears it out, gets it off to Ludwig. It was too easy. Ludwig has it knocked away by King, and we got a foul call. Is it on St. Anthony? Yeah, yes, it is, and Coach Kuznerik is really upset. Ed Gardner grabbed a whistle, threatened him with a tee. Fouls on Ludwig. Yep. Jason second. That yeah. wasn't a good possession for St. Anthony. They never oh. really did do anything with it offensively. Well, they had that layup, and it just wouldn't crawl up over the rim. That's five fouls yeah. on St. Anthony in the half. Robert was too wide open. That's huh? too open. <laughs> I tell you, too open. 46 to 37. Back to a nine-point lead. Kings on the side of the court on a double team. Gets it out to Gobzinski. Off to Taylor, or off to Tipton, rather. Here's King for three. Good. No. No good. It went under the net. I thought it went in. Here comes Ludwig. He gets it off to Witte. He powers up on the jumper. It's rejected by Gobzinski. Nice reject, and T-Town ends up with a basketball. Custer on the side to King, and we got a foul and a charge on Johnny King. Terry Andrews was the trail official on that. Kevin Schnitker was right under the basket, and, he didn't and call Terry it. called the charge. Yeah. Wow. So Johnny King picks up the personal on the offensive foul. Wow. King's third foul. Woo. I wonder if he'll talk about that in the locker room afterwards. That's six on T-Town, their <laughs> third turnover this quarter. And yeah, we got too many men on the floor. Ludwig's going to get a breather as they bring uh, Jonathan Wendy back in. 44 seconds to go in the third quarter. It's 46-37. T-Town by nine. The Bulldogs had it down to about six at one point. Couldn't get it any closer. Wendy gets it into Storm. Adam brings it down with 42 seconds to go. Storm directing traffic. Gets it off to Fear Day. 
Verde gets it to Flock. Inside to Schlonser. Schlonser goes up for the layup, and he got fouled. That may be on Mitch Custer. It is on Mitch Custer, Larry. He blocked the shot, knocked it away, because it looked like a, layup. a sure layup. Yeah. Custer's second, as sure as a layup is. That's seven, so it's bonus time for St. Anthony. 31 seconds to go. Free throw no good by Robert. He'll try again. Schlonser's got seven, but he hasn't scored in his third quarter. He's had a couple of opportunities. Ludwig is going to come back in. Here's Schlonser's next free throw. It's good. Schlonser's got eight. That makes it 46 to 38. And now Wendy sets down as Ludwig returns. 31.1 seconds to go. Quickly. Custer gets it over to King, works against Fear Day, now picks up a double team, gets it out front to Gobzinski, stolen by Storm. Storm drives for the layup, and he scores. Did a good job of watching where Gobby was that yeah. time, and he went around him, and I think we might have had a foul. No, ball got knocked away, and so Terry Schnitker stops okay. the clock with only 17 seconds to go. The ball was rolling away, so he blew the whistle. All right, it's 46 to 40. It's a six-point lead for T-Town. As Storm got the steal and put in the layup. Boy, it's been a long... There's another tip away, but regained by Custer. He turns and shoots at the buzzer. It's no good. Loose ball on the floor. Gobby puts it up. No good. Here's a rebound. Fair day out of bounds. Belongs to T-Town, but the horn sounds. Ending our third quarter of play. Mercy. Stick around, folks. We got a final eight to play. Back in a minute. Here's your score. The topless 46. St. Anthony, 40. For 75%, two turnovers, a vast improvement there. Seven rebounds. They missed a three. St. Anthony still has not made a three in this game. T Town, five out of 13, 38%. Two for three from the line, 67%. Three turnovers, five rebounds. They are two for four on three point shots in the third quarter. T Town's ball on the alternate possession. They go inside to Gobzinski, puts it up, no good. Loose ball, scramble for Tipton's got it, puts it up, no good, and he got foul. Boy, in the battle of offensive rebounds, it's clearly gone T-Town's way. Fair Day on the foul. Inside. You're right. Fair Day's fifth. Coach talked about that uh, prior to the game, the fact that uh, St. Anthony just had to get some offensive rebounds in this uh, ball game to stay in it. We'll All see. right, they got to replace Fair Day, and so the coach calls his other four players down when he's going to come in so he uses a full 60 second he's got to replace the player to talk to his team Way and not get charged with the timeout way this one's gone i doubt he'll be the last player to foul out no, uh, there'll be some others joining him here shortly tipton who's again played a super ball game off the bench for kenny crawford goes to the free throw line he just does it all the time tipton's free throw good Five points for him, 47 to 40. Well, he's steady. Shoes by seven. Well, he's always in the right place at the right time. You know, sad to get a rebound. This one's no good. Rebound scramble for tip by Gobby out of bounds belongs to St. Anthony. All right, 7.45 to go. If St. Anthony can score this trip, Larry, then they're down to a two possession game. This is a big trip. All righty. Storm brings it down, gets it on the side to Flock. Out in front it goes to Slauncer, inside to Ludwig, works against King, puts it up off balance, no good. Rebound Taylor. And we got a technical on Coach Kuznarek. Coach Kuznarek didn't like the fact that his man got shoved on the rebound, and Ed Gardner slapped him with a T. And boy, that, that comes at the wrong time. So ja, Mitch Custer is going to go to the free throw line and shoot the tees. Then T-Town will get the ball. Mercy. Coach K is complaining about the fact that Ludwig got shoved. He didn't like it. He said something to Ed Gardner, and Ed had heard enough. Custer hits the free throw. He's got 16. Next one up by Custer. Good. 17 makes it a nine-point game, 49 to 40. And T-Town gets the ball. And T-Town gets the ball at midcourt. Gobby will inbound. Custer made both free throws. Gives him 17. And a nine-point lead now for T-Town. Tipton's in trouble in the corner. Gets it out to Taylor. Back to Tipton. Off to Custer. To King. 
T-Town can afford to run a little time off the clock, but King goes underneath for the layup, and he got it. Johnny King's got 13 as he made the layup, and it's an 11-point lead, 51 to 40. And the ball inside to Schlonser gets knocked out of bounds by Taylor. Just for the record, both teams are over the limit now because that technical will count as a personal foul. So both teams are in the bonus. All right. Ludwig will inbound. Goes on the side with it to Schlonser. Schlonser gets it out to Adam Storm. Over to Flock. Back to Ludwig. To Storm. Storm looking. Back out to Ludwig. Ludwig down the paint, goes for the off-balance shot, got it, count it, and he got fouled. Mercy, what a move. Gobzinski, his fourth foul. Ludwig, the with an acrobatic shot, has 20 points on the night. Well, he figures if it, if it goes in, great. If it doesn't go in, maybe I'll get a couple of foul shots. He knows that at this point, St. Anthony has to get some points in the, on the board. One way or the other. You bet. So a chance for a three-point play for Jason Ludwig. 6.50 to go, it's 51-42. Well, every time St. Anthony makes a run, the shoes bounce right back and score. To, to illustrate Ludwig's importance in this game, Larry, St. Anthony in the second half only has seven points out of people besides Ludwig. 21 for him now as he makes a free throw. It's 51-43, to 43, an eight-point game. He needs some help, though, if you're a St. Anthony fan. Tipton over to Custer. Back over to Tipton. Mitch Custer. Tipton inside to Gopzinski and he traveled. No, a timeout before the travel. So T-Town got the timeout call by Coach Crawford before the traveling call. So it's still going to be T-Town's ball. They get a break. This is only a 20. We keep it right here with 631 to go. That's a pretty lucky break for the shoes. You got to have those once in a while, don't you, down the tournament trail? Mercy. Looked like Gobby had traveled. I thought that's what the whistle was. But Coach Crawford had called a timeout. And now you know the coaches can call the timeout, so. There'll be T-Town's ball under the basket. Well, St. Anthony's got to get Ludwig some help. I don't yeah. know where it's going to come from, but St. Anthony has three baskets out of people besides Ludwig in the well, second half. I'd like to see Mr. Flock do what he did last night, and that's crank up a couple of threes. They don't have a made three in the game. Custer has it, looking, spins out of trouble, gets it to Swingler to Tipton, layup good on the baseline. He's nice everywhere. feed. He's everywhere. Tipton scores again, 53-43. It's a 10-point ball game. Adam Storm for the Bulldogs goes left side, still going, pops a deuce. It's no good. Rebound goes to Winnie, and he got fouled. And there, if this is on Eric Swingler, Larry, that's five on him. And it is. So Eric Swingler has fouled out on the battle for the rebound there. So each team's lost a player. So it'll be Winnie going to the line as Swingler fouls out. In to replace him is Aaron Niebrigge. So Nick Swingler, a 5'10 senior, fouls out here with uh, 6.07 to go. Nick didn't score, but that's not unusual. And Aaron Niebrigge in to replace him. Meanwhile, Jonathan Winnie goes to the free throw line. His first one is in and out, no good. Rebound, Taylor. He gets it to Mitch Custer. Six minutes to go in the ball game. It's 53-43, T-Town by 10. Been a up and down battle. Aaron Niebrigge double team gets it to Custer. He's in trouble at midcourt, clears it off to Johnny King. King powers up and it's called for a charge. Johnny King gets the offensive foul. King's call for his fourth foul. T-Town's first turnover this quarter. Shoes are running with Gobby and King now with four. They're in a lot worse foul trouble than St. Anthony is now. But uh, Gobby's not out there right now when they brought the, Well, yeah. They no. brought Taylor in to give him a breather and protect him a little bit. Now they mop up the floor and wipe off the basketball out there. It'll be Ludwig inbounding to Storm. 5.49 left in this one. It's a 10-point lead for the Wooden Shoes. The winner, the Red Hill, Wednesday night, 7.30, against either Paris or Casey Westfield. We'll be there. And Casey Westfield was leading at the half. Storm goes underneath to Ludwig. He goes for the shot. No good. Got fouled. He'll go at the line. Taylor fouled him. 
That's his fourth. Well, Jason Ludwig has just been a scoring machine here tonight, and the Bulldogs know he can shoot inside. They've been getting the ball to him. He's getting people in foul trouble. He just needs some help. Yep. 53-43. St. Anthony with three points in the quarter. Ludwig's free throw is good. Four now, Ludwig has them all. He's got 22, makes it 53-44. He'll try and cut it to eight. His toss up and in. 23 points for Jason Ludwig to go with eight rebounds. Mercy, good ball game. King lobs it over to Custer. Down court comes to Topless. They get it over on the side to King. King gets it in the corner to Taylor. Taylor double team gets it out there to King. Gets it out in front to Aaron Niebergy off to Mitch Custer. T-Town running a little time off the clock here. They got the lead and the basketball. They can afford to do it. Kip, uh, Taylor goes baseline, puts up a shot. No good, but he got fouled. Well, again, you take it to the hole and you figure if it goes in, great. And if you can draw the foul, so much the better. And Ludwig's call for his third. Yep. Again, both teams are over the limit. Five minutes and six seconds as Taylor goes to the line. Todd's got two points. Made a couple free throws earlier. His toss up here is no good. Into the lineup comes Gobzinski, sitting down as Aaron Niebergy. So Gobby comes back with four fouls. King's already out there with four, as Greg told you. Here's Taylor's second free throw. It's up, it's short, just barely touched the rim. Storm gets a rebound, but it's taken away from him by Taylor. And then a foul on Flock. Adam Storm had the rebound. And before he could take control and start to move down court, Taylor stole it from him. Taylor tried to dribble it out to safety, and Adam Flock reached in and fouled him. And there's the fourth foul on Flock. I think it's your night when things like that happens to you. <laughs> Taylor's free throw, no good. Didn't touch anything. That'll be taken on the side by St. Anthony. So Todd Daly having a little trouble from the charity strike. St. Anthony still, I'll say again, has not made a three in this game. And they're down by eight. They have not taken a three. Here's an awfully big possession for them. They get it to Flock since the for third quarter. Inside to Schlonser. He goes for the hole. It's stripped away. Out of bounds. Touched by Johnny King. Robert tried to go inside where there's a lot of white shirts, and they knocked it away from him. Ludwig will inbound for St. Anthony. Looking, 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 gets it to Flock. Flock spins, dumps it out to Storm. On the side to Ludwig, fakes, drives, stops, pops a two, no good. Gets his own rebound, sticks it in. What a play. Ludwig with 25 points. Mercy, what a show. 53 to 47. Well, there's a travel on Mitch Custer. He swung the pivot foot and he gets called for the travel. Now it's a two possession game of St. Anthony can get a couple of threes, which they haven't gotten all night. It's a six-point game, and St. Anthony's got the ball. Both teams with plenty of timeouts, in case you're wondering about that. Flock to Winnie. The sophomore gets it out front to Storm. Storm off to Flock. Ludwig, the only kid to score for St. Anthony in the quarter to this point. Winnie gets it off to Storm. Storm goes inside to Ludwig. Has Neberge on him. Back to Storm for three. It's long. Rebound goes to Taylor. Taylor fires it out of there as Schlonser hits the deck. They go to Custer, and we got a whistle. And we got Schlonser running over Taylor, and a technical foul is called on Robert Schlonser. He said, Terry Andrews said that he tripped, and now there's another technical. And is that on T-Town? Yeah, that was on Taylor. So they call one on Schlotzer, and then they call one on Taylor. Different officials calling each of those T's. Wow. Schlotzer said something. Schlotzer said something to Taylor. They got nose to nose. Johnny King came in and grabbed Taylor. And then somebody else came in. Gobzinski said something to Schlonser. And then Taylor said something, and the other official heard him and slapped him with the T. So I think we're going to have offsetting technicals. And then who's got alternate possession gets the ball. The foul on Taylor is his five on him. I'm so sorry, he, I'm trying to catch up. That's all right. Aaron Niebergy comes in to replace Taylor. 
I think they're going to shoot the tees. It's not like you offset and don't shoot them. You go ahead and shoot the tees, I'm sure. And, and then, then the older the possession will decide takes who gets the ball. That's right. right. Like I said, we're kind of close to, to the go. crowd. Sorry, folks. 4.02 to go here in our ball game. The officials are discussing this situation. That's rather unusual. So they, <laughs> oh my. We got still got a six point ball game, 53-47, and Mitch Custer will go at the line for T-Town. The coach has already told Eddie Gardner that he's gonna shoot their tees, and probably Jason Ludwig will shoot St. Anthony's tees, but we'll have to wait and see. Now they're gonna call both coaches in. Ed Gardner wants to talk to both Coach Crawford and Coach K. Eddie Gardner says, here's what we got. And so they're explaining it to the coaches in front of the scorer's table. Just to throw this in, yeah. both teams are in the super bonus. Right. Every trip, it's two foul shots now for both right. teams. That's right. worth noting. All right. Ed Gardner's explaining what happened and what the call is here. I don't know whether Coach Crawford's going to agree or Coach K, either one, are going to agree, but Eddie Gardner's trying to say, here's the way the rule states it, and here's how we're going to do it. Just get it right. That's all I ask. Yeah. Now, I don't care if it takes a Coach minute. Crawford doesn't right. like it. You can see he does not like the situation. That would lend me to believe that St. Anthony's got the alternate possession. Aaron Nieberg, he's going to go to the line and shoot two technicals. So Aaron Nieberg, goes to the line, the 5'11 junior. Now there was the foul on Schlotzer, right? So they, we've got to shoot those two, Larry. Don't okay. forget that. That's right. We've got to shoot the fouls. That's why Nieberg up there instead of Custer right now is I because think Aaron was fouled. Th yeah, right. And then Mitch will shoot the tees, and then we'll see who shoots the two for St. Anthony. And then I think St. Anthony's probably going to get the ball on the alternate possession. I think right. it's their turn. I think we've got it all sorted out. They're explaining it to the PA. Let's, we may be able to pick up the explanation there. So Schlotzer's got three now because he got two there. One on the personal, one on the tee. 4.02 to go in the ball game. To the line goes Aaron Nieberg to shoot two. Super bonus for him. Right. First one is up and no good. He'll try again. Aaron backs up. Goes back up to the line, gets the ball. Takes his time, puts it up, and in. So Aaron Nieberg, he's got four, and now Mitch Custer will shoot the tees for Totopoulos. The so second. Custer will shoot two. The second technical of the night on St. Anthony, the first on t -Town. Mitch Custer with 17, puts it up, no good. He hit the front of the rim, he'll try again. 4.02 to go. This one by Custer is good. So he made one of two. He's got 18. And now Jason Ludwig will shoot two at the other end. Now the scene shifts, folks. Yeah. And I think St. Anthony will then get the ball. I think on the alternate position. Right. I think that's correct. Ludwig on the toss is in and out. No good. We'll try again. Well, so everybody's missed the first one. Let's see if everybody makes the second one. Jason Ludwig puts it up and in. They Ludwig's did. got 26. Three guys shot two, and everybody made, missed it made. And St. Anthony gets it at midcourt on the alternate possession. I think that eventually ends up being a turnover, although I'm not quite <laughs> sure. That's the least of the things that happen, huh? That's right. Storm gets it in backcourt. We're back to action. It's a 55-48 lead for T-Town. Flock has it. Goes out in front to Schlonser. Schlonser gets it to Ludwig in the corner. Wait, yeah. Ludwig goes up and fires it over to Storm. He's open for a three. It's short. Rebound goes to Flock. Puts it in. Adam Flock on the rebound's got eight. 55 to 50. It's a five-point lead for T-Town with 3.36 to go. Lots of timeouts left. Johnny King brings it down, shovels it out to Custer. T-Town looks like they want to run some time off the clock. Nieberg, he gets it into Gobzinski, back out to Custer, over to King. Remember, T-Town's without Swingler. That might hurt a little. On the side, Aaron Nieberg, he back to King, over to Custer. Custer back out to King. T-Town's just going to run the time down here unless St. Anthony does something like a steal or a, a foul. 
King almost traveled. St. Anthony fans trying to help the officials out here. <laughs> Mitch Custer. Let's see if D Town or uh, St. Anthony tightens the screws on defense here a little bit. They get King at midcourt and he gets it out to Custer. That was they close got, to a turnover. They got Tipton on the baseline. And there's a push on Wendy. He pushed Johnny King, trying to get him to step on the midcourt line. That's four on Wendy. Two for King here. Two forty-eight to go. Johnny King at the line has 13 points. Well, whoever wins this game, I think, will uh, tell you that the, it was a hard-earned victory, huh? Regardless, King's free throw is around and good. He's got 14. Here comes Boucher in for Wendy. 56-50, T-Town by six with 2.48 to go. Johnny King eyes a hoop, puts this one up, and no good. Rebound goes to Ludwig. Who else? Jason Ludwig, he's gonna bring it down. He dings it down, takes it into the paint, dumps it off on the side, tipped out of bounds by Aaron Nieberge. Ludwig tried to get it to Boucher in the corner, and Nieberge knocked it away. All right. Ludwig will inbound it on the side of the court. He gets it out to Storm. St. Anthony still has not made a three-point shot, Larry. Storm's got it. Bulldogs set up the offense. Now Storm goes baseline, still going, dumps it out to, tried to get it to Flock, and he didn't know it was coming his way, and the Bulldogs throw it away. So they fail to convert on that possession. That's her fourth turnover. So T-Town brings it down. Now we're down to 223. Johnny King into the corner is double teamed. He finally gets it out of there to Dobzinski. Back to Custer, to King. Way out front they go with it to Aaron Niebergi. Back to Custer. Over to King. Out in front it goes to Niebergi to Custer. Mitch Custer. Back out in front gets it to Niebergi. Back to Custer. Over to King. Two minutes. Two minutes and counting. Tipton gets it to Custer. Custer out in front to Aaron Niebergi. Back to Mitch Custer. He's the workhorse. Cross-court pass goes to King. Out in front to Custer. Custer, they get it to Tipton, and he gets fouled, and that's the part, that's the, they didn't want to foul Custer, so they waited till he gave it up, and then they fouled whoever got the ball. Foul on Ludwig, that's his fourth. Tipton had the baseline, too, you had to foul. Oh, yeah. A minute 45 to go, 56-50, T-Town by six. First time they played, T-Town won 68-56. The second time they played, they won 69-62. Free throw by Tipton is good. That's big because that's a seven-point margin. So Tipton makes it a 57-50 lead for the shoes. So now even two threes won't tie, and now it's a three-possession game. A minute 45 to go. Next toss, Tipton up, and no good. Rebound, Schlonser. Clears it out to Storm. Seven-point deficit for the Bulldogs. Their fans on their feet. They get it to Flock. Storm, Ludwig, Boucher. Out in front to Flock, and he has it go off his feet out of bounds. I think Adam Flock was trying to get set up for a three-point attempt, but it went off his feet out of bounds as he dropped the ball, and it's a turnover. So it'll be Shoes ball. Here comes Jeremy Ungren into the ball game. I think he's coming in for fouling purposes, probably, since he hasn't been in. <laughs> he's gonna come in for Storm and commit a foul, and Simple comes in for Flock. He'll also commit a foul, or they can, the hatchet men. That's right, here comes Wendy back in. All kinds of changes here for the Bulldogs oh, with Wendy. a minute and a half left. Wendy has one foul to give for his country, and so he replaces Schlonser. All right. This Looking must be to get the it defensive in team. Robzinski gets it into Custer. Custer gets fouled by Simple. So Jason Simple picks up the foul. Obviously is first. And now back in comes the trio of Schlonser, Flock, and Storm to replace those three who came in earlier. 57-50. Oh, Simple's going to stay in. They're not going to do anything until after the first free throw by Mitch Custer. Our favorite rule. 
Custer's free throw is good. Mitch has got 19, makes it an eight-point game, and now those subs come in. I want to give you one more regular season opportunity to grouse about that rule. People probably getting tired of done it all year. <laughs> we'll get an Effingham Charleston score for you here in just a jiffy, so hang on. Here's a free throw by Mitch Custer. It's good again. There's his 20 points. Big game, 20 points as usual. 59 to 50, it's a nine-point ball game. And there's a near steal. It's loose on the floor, and T-Town's got it, and they call a jump. Alternate possession favors St. Anthony. Mm. Boy, a scramble was on, and St. Anthony just trying to run their normal offense and get a shot, and T-Town won't even let them do that. That's a sign of a good defensive ball club. All right, it comes into Storm. Storm across midcourt directing traffic. They're trying to get it to flock for a three, I think. Somebody better shoot something. They go underneath to Schlonser, his layup good. Schlonser scores, he's got 10, and St. Anthony calls a 20-second timeout. We'll be back. At gets it in to Mitch Custer, and he gets fouled immediately by Jason Simple, his second. Boy, you wonder how this game might have turned if St. Anthony had had Beerman available to him. He's scored in double figures almost every game for the last three or four weeks. And the nose yeah. injury, he left him the unavailable. Nose injury. Uh, Timothy Christian, 13. Newton, 4 at the half. Wow. Custer hits the free throw. He's got 21. That's girls' Class A basketball. Here comes Ludwig in, replacing Gun Ungren, and Flock comes in. So, Busher and Ludwig and Schlonser and Storm and Flock. Meanwhile, Custer's next free throw, good again. And that's seven out of eight for Custer from the line in this fourth quarter. 22 points for him in the game. It's 61-52, 58 seconds to go. Storm on the baseline, dumps it over to Busher. Out in front, they go to Ludwig. Bulldogs need a shot, any kind of a shot. Storm takes a three, out, no good. Rebound Schlonser, no good. Rebound uh, Flock, no good. This rebound taken and finally cleared out by Gobzinski, who hits the deck. Now he gets up slowly as Custer brings it down court. Gobby fell on his hip, I think, and there's a foul on Flock. He fouled Mitch Custer. Flock's fifth. Gobby limping a little bit as he comes to the sidelines. He says he's okay. He landed on his hip. Meanwhile, Flock leaves the game via the personal foul route. Adam leaves with eight points on the night. A handshake from all of his teammates. Gobby landed on his hip down there on that rebound. He cleared the rebound out and fell down and still got it to Custer. Gobby's kind of rubbing his hip a little bit out there. You kind of worry about an injury to anywhere in his lower extremities after what he's gone through in his career. He's got a look of pain on his face, but I think he'll be all right. Back to the line, Mitch Custer. He's made a living there. <laughs> That's a fact. Seven out of eight from the line this quarter. 33 seconds to go. Looks like T-Town. To the sectional, Custer hits it, he's got 23. 62-52, it's a 10-point game, Custer hits again. 24 for him, Storm brings it down for St. Anthony, gets it to Boucher, shoots a three, no good. Rebound tracked down in the corner by Jeremy Ungren. He's double team, triple team, and they take it away from him. Boy, when the little guy gets it against T-Town, you better look up, because they're going to be three shoes around you. 14 seconds to go. 13 seconds to go. 